Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about saddle height and how it really changed the way I cycle in adjusting the saddle height to my perfect position. It was for me a really game changer because I have to admit I got it wrong, not very first with the Merida, but when I swapped to the Canyon. I fell for what I consider to be the exposed seat post complex, which I think affects a lot of cycling and I got into this uh, trap myself. When I first got the Merida, I adjusted the bike and I tried to get used to my position on the bike and it was my first road bike. So I've adjusted the position on the handlebars. I set up the saddle using a very simple heel method where you go on the bike. If you don't have anyone to help you out, you will lean against a piece of furniture and positioning the heel on the pedal, you reach the longest position with the pedal almost on the line of your seat tube and you should have your uh, leg completely extended with the heel on the pedal. This way, when you are actually engaged, you will have a favorable angle and that will be the best position for your riding. This position worked for me on the Merida. I started riding, I enjoyed road cycling a lot more and I got really into it and I started to ride a lot more. And the problem started when I got the Canyon. I got my Canyon Ultimate. I was so happy with it. It's much lighter than the Merida. Straight away I was thinking I'm going to go a lot faster, a lot better on the hills. And I started and it didn't happen straight away. And I was puzzled. And I found out that I made a mistake. I don't know, maybe thinking I'm already an expert, which, I, which I'm not, definitely. And uh, I fell into this trap of the seat post complex, which I like to call. It seemed to me that the more pro you want to look, the better you want to ride, you have to almost ride on a very high saddle. And I know that is a clear mistake, but I found out on my own experience. So I went out on a very long course, about 100 kilometers that I did with the Merida on the Surrey Hills. And I thought, oh, I'm going to fly on, on those hills. And it was much, much harder, actually. I was so tired. I could not keep up with my, my friends on a straight line. My quads were burning and I found myself in a really, really uh, bad situation. I looked at the spec of the bike and I could not find out a reason. And eventually the seat was too high. I started to look into this to try to understand why it's easy to fall into the trap of setting your saddle too high. First of all is the, the pros. So we look at the professional, of course they are, are heroes. They tend to ride bikes that are one or two size smaller than what is usually recommended. With stems that vary between 12 to 14 centimeters, so they have a slightly different approach to, to the ride. They usually sit a lot more forward than normal cyclists. And it's normal to see a lot more seat posts to adjust to the body because bikes for pros are usually smaller for the relative height. So this is the number one visual impact that you will see where on a similar height, cyclist, if you see a pro, usually rides a much smaller bike and a much more exposed seat post. Second element is more of a mechanical element. Every movement that you do in terms of cycling is uh, more or less a combination of a pushing moment 
and a pulling moment with your hamstrings. And it's quite important to see where these two movements will need to be joined together in terms of pushing and pulling back so you use the full muscle of your leg, the quads, the hamstring and the glutes in a movement that is smooth and recruits all the fibers for you to get the best power. And you can see, for example, in these videos with my wife trying to do some uh, uh, push and leg uh, curls, where your most efficient position is in terms of the, uh, the power. When your leg is fully stretched, you will release the power because of course the muscle is fully contracted and when you do a leg curl the best momentum would be when you have your leg bent not when it's fully straight so when you push down you do have the most power in this region especially when the angle is around 90 degrees and if you go down this would be at the most power but if you are slightly higher the quads will eventually lose any more pushing power and your hamstring will be in a very difficult position to lift the leg up because the leg is going to be almost fully extended and it's much more difficult to get the second part of the cycling revolution. So that's why in a more favorable movement when you're seated slightly lower you will reach not the full extension of the quads so we still feel engaged and you will have the best recruitment for your hamstring when you need to go the second part of the bottom stroke. But it's easy to fall for much higher position because at first it feels there is there's a release of the quads when you reach the full extension it's like when you rest at the end of a leg press but you will lose a lot of engagement in your hamstring where you need to do the second half of the movement so what i did is i started also looking at the pros actual sit height so there's a lot of videos on GCN where they check the pros bikes and they give you the measurement of the saddle high and that's usually the measurement between the bottom bracket and the top of the saddle. So I started looking at pros that had a similar height, I'm um, 185, and what saddle they ride and I found out that I was riding a saddle much higher than anyone in my height and I was riding the saddle so high that some of the pros that were taller than me 192, 193. So straight away I found out that there was something wrong. What I did is I lowered my saddle. Starting point ideally you want to start low and reach a little bit to, to the high point. One of the key elements to understand that the saddle was too high is how the movement feels. This is extremely important. You will definitely feel that the saddle is too high if you feel that your movement is more up and down rather than a circular movement. Because if you reach with your toe pointed down, and you need to reach up, the movement becomes more of like up and down movement and you will see that you almost lose control of your hips while if you do have the full control of the circular movements, your hips maintain very stable and the full power will go into your pedal stroke. Another element that is really interesting if your saddle is too high, you will feel almost like the pedal pulls your shoe away. So the key for you is to understand that 
you do have the correct position is that the pressure on the pedal is the same throughout the full revolution. If in this moment you almost feel that you don't have enough pressure down on the pedal or almost the pedal is pulling down your shoe, that's where to me your saddle is too high. So yes, you can concentrate on the angles, but to me the very best indicator is where throughout the movement you have a uniform pressure throughout this, the movement of the pedal stroke and it feels more like a circular movement rather than a chopping up and down. I do believe that when you are pointing your toes you might lose a lot of power. See this muscle here how here we'll have the full power with more or less 90 degree angle while here it feels straight away disengaged. So it's so hard to push really hard when your toe is pointing out rather than having the 90 degrees between your shin and your foot. And if you are pushing with a pointed foot I think that you're losing the best power on your pedal stroke. To sum it up, the elements that now I realize were for me an indication of my saddle being too high were not just the hips moving because I didn't really feel much of a problem on the hips but the quads were the first indication. So if at the end of your ride your quads are burning, they are working too hard and the posterior chain, hamstring and glutes, they are disengaged. Second element was a chopping movement. So I felt I was really pushing like pistons rather than going on a circular movement because the pressure on the pedal was not the same. Third element that I now remember, I could not keep a constant pedaling. So I was doing burst and I had to rest and again burst and rest. Now with the correct saddle high I got pressure throughout the stroke, my hips are stable, there's full engagement in the leg so at the end of the ride you will want to feel that you are aching overall quads, hamstring and glutes because it looks like then everything has worked together and I can go on a constant ride pedaling at my pace and I don't feel the need to release after the burst and I can go on a much steadier ride. What I would suggest is not to concentrate on the initial setup, use maybe the, the heel method to set your saddle, go on a ride with the spanner and move the saddle slightly higher up until you feel this loosening of the pressure on the pedal that means that you have reached your top end and slightly back down. The moment you feel full pressure then you realize that you reach your perfect level. Don't be tempted to go too high. If you are setting the saddle too low you will not lose power otherwise if your saddle is too high it's going to be a disaster. So if you are not using the full muscle, you're pointing down when you push at the bottom, you will lose so much power that eventually it will not be enjoyable for ride. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I know that it was a little bit of a long video, but it's a very, very important topic and to me completely changed my enjoyment on the bike. Thank you again for watching. If you like to subscribe, I'll be very, very grateful. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you to the next one. Ciao.